there! Today I thought we would have a look at this notebook. This is the Nokko dot dash notebook and this was sent to me by Brad. Brad aka the pen addict. This is his company and they make this paper uh, or these notebooks I should say and these are 50 pound paper notebooks that are supposed to be fountain pen friendly. Thanks Brad for sending me one. I'll give it a decent treatment and let's have a look what we can do. Um, it's called dot dash. I mean I've already tried this out of course and written some stuff in here. Let's let's take a page that I have not yet soiled. I'm going to zoom in. Um, the size of the notebook is three and a half by five point five inches and I don't know how well you can see this but this is why it's called let me grab a fine nib here so that I can point this out. This is a dot dash notebook. So you have squares so a grid uh, lining and then you have dots at the corners of the um, uh, squares making this dot dash. So fountain pen friendly paper, let's have a look what we can do. I, I, have, I have lined up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, uh, 11 pens. So I thought we would just see. We start with a Pilot Elabo. Uh, this is the uh, uh, soft extra fine. Uh, so I'm going to write down soft extra fine. Um, I really don't know what inks are in all these pens because I inked them up at some point. Need to prime this feed a little bit. Sorry. Uh, so please, I, I honestly I forgot. I think this is Sailor Sky High, but I could be wrong. Okay, I've just primed the feed there, so disregard the F. Um, some fast writing. You see feathering, but this is a very wet extra fine now. The paper is not coated of any kind that I feel, so it does absorb your ink well. Um, that was an extra fine, that was just primed, so it was not entirely fair. Here I have a vintage Pilot 400NN uh, that is also an extra fine. This is a Gerbin Vert Olive. Um, I'm applying no pressure here. The ink is sucked into the paper. Uh, so the drying time is, is uh, very short, which is nice. So there you have it. Um, I, I would say that in this case I don't really see uh, feathering or bad feathering at least. Um, but as you may also see this is definitely no longer extra fine writing. So the paper does suck up the ink and um, expand a little bit it seems. Uh, here we have a fine. This is just a very simple uh, platinum preppy. Um, with the ink that came with it. Guess whose pen this is. I want to use different types of inks too because as you can see this ink seems to um, feather a lot less and at least spread less so this should give you an idea of what, what that would be like um, to, to use on a, on a paper like this. So it does not necessarily feather a lot. Then we have a medium in a Visconti upper elements Again, super fast drying time. I'm pretty sure this is Diamine Merlot. <clears throat> so, there we have it again. I don't really see any real feathering. On my website, I'll, I'll um, post pictures of this up close so that you can see what the uh, the, the writing was like. Here we have a broad in a yard of lead uh, Viceroy Grand. The ink I'm pretty sure is Visconti Blue. Nice well behaved ink. Um, no feathering. Now what I'm interested in is seeing bleed through. As you can see, bleed through is quite severe. This is has completely bled through, rendering the other side of the page page uh, well unusable, I would say. With the extra fine, it's a bit better. With the fine, it's it's perfect. With the medium, it bleeds through. With the broad, it definitely shades through. It's definitely show through there, and there is definitely points of bleed through. Let's use a different page because I'm not done yet. Here's a, uh, a Pelican M1000 in double broad. 
Uh, the ink, I honestly don't recall. It's a dark blue. You see that with a wet nib, it is the ink is really absorbed into the paper really quickly. Uh, I thought we'd try another double broad just because I have another ink in there. Uh, this was a uh, 18K double broad. This is a Visconti uh, Opera Master double broad with in palladium. Okay. Again, no feathering in these very broad and wet nibs. I don't really see any feathering, and that's definitely a good thing. Um, let's have a look at a triple broad nib in this M1005. Uh, that requires a bit of priming, usually. There we go. I have not squeezed ink into the feed so it's not overly saturated. That was a disgusting Z, forgive me, over the lazy dog. Okay, so here we have two double broads and a triple broad. Um, bleed through significant for the double broad uh, for both I would say um, you can definitely see that with the Visconti blue which again is a well-behaved ink there's a little less bleed through with um, this was Montblanc Irish green sorry I didn't mention that you can see that there's significant bleed through and uh, even to the point where it has infected the other page the page below it and this was the uh, I'm pretty sure this is uh, Sailor Sky High um, in the triple broad and there is significant bleed through too. Okay, we're almost done. I thought the last things we would do is use a stub. Uh, this is a uh, 1.3 uh, millimeter stub with um, a, a diamine apple glory in a um, Visconti Opera Crystal. Then we have the stub area covered as well. Apple Glory, a nice vibrant green ink. Now, I thought we would also do something ridiculous and actually use a Pilot Parallel 6mm. After all, when it's fountain pen friendly, then... Uh, uh, this has a black in there, and I don't know which one, I don't recall. It's uh, very likely that this is a Caveco black, which is what I like to put in there. There you have an S. Even with such an ultra broad nib, I still don't really see a lot of feathering so that's very good and I thought the final thing I would do is just use a, a simple ballpoint sometimes they're practical you have to admit it okay bleed through here for the um, stub significant bleed through again this page is the other side of this page is rendered useless a significant bleed through. You can see there's just liquid ink on that side um, from the um, parallel and with the ballpoint, no bleed through, no show through, etc. And the page that was below this, as you can see for the pilot parallel, uh, has bled through significantly. So, again, pictures will be on the website. What is my rundown of this paper? Is it fountain pen friendly? Well, that depends a little bit on your definition. Um, it doesn't feather but it does bleed through significantly. So unless you use extra fine and fine nibs exclusively, and as you can see, even with, with extra fine nibs, I, I get some issues. Uh, maybe one thing that might be fun to try is to do some flex. I have two nibs here that will flex anyway. Uh, here we have that vintage uh, Pelican. Let's see what this does. You see, the, the paper is so absorbent that it actually sucks the feed dry. 
um, because this this pen does not it's a vintage 14k flex it doesn't usually run dry so I have to adjust my writing speed a little bit I usually don't have to do that and you see that at this point when you use this excessive ink uh, the feathering definitely starts now again of course it's also a bit of a property of the ink but being so absorbent this is what you get with paper okay that um, Pilot Alabo this is actually the feed touching the paper that's that second line uh, you see that there is significant feathering uh, I would say in these flex purposes but then again I do think you have to be realistic a notebook like this was not really designed to be used with your flex pens so again the rundown what do I think well it doesn't feather that's great it bleeds through significantly it shows through significantly so I don't think this is the most fountain pen friendly paper in the world. Give me an Oxford notebook or a notebook with Oxford paper any day of the week because those will not bleed through, will not show through, even with 6mm parallels, even with 15mm dip nibs, they will not show through and not bleed through and this paper does. So is it for you? That depends. I think if you stick to fine and media, uh, sorry, fine and um, extra fine nibs, it may be okay. If you only use ballpoints, that's definitely not an issue. Uh, if you just need this to take quick notes, it's fine, but you probably probably be um, forced to only use one side of the paper. You can't really, I mean, depending on what types of pens you use, I don't think you can really uh, uh, reuse the other side of the paper as you can see here so Brad thanks again for sending me this it was a pleasure to try this out I hope this was useful and uh, I'm glad to see you later guys bye bye